let's get into these topics. What is a way that we would rally our adversaries from your perspective, from your form, in your um, wheelhouse? Where, where does that start for you? I don't know, Dr. Denise, you wanna get us kicked off? So, you know, having been involved in different committees uh, and, and with different people, uh, what we do or what my experience has been into uh, starting with a topic that that's pretty open-ended. You don't want to start off with something that, you know, we can solve that right away. We want something that is hard to, that we have to really grapple with and then bring them together and then bring folks together and uh, just come up with, uh, just talk, basically just talk. Uh, I have found in my experience has been that people like to talk in small groups. So it's not, you don't want to have 50 people together. You may want to have 20 or 30 people together, or even something like this, because they're not going to want to share. And you want to hear from everyone. Um, David and Aiden, I want to come to you guys. Tell me a little bit about, let's, let's do a scenario. You know, you're in a school. Tell me a little bit what that looks like um, in terms of pulling people together, what would that look like if you guys had to lead a team as teenagers, as ninth graders? How would you guys suggest some ways for us to come together? Um, well, knowing that teams are on their phones 99% of the time, like that's the straight up truth. I suggest we get their contact information and maybe create a group posts. We can share each other's ideas outside of school because not every teenager is comfortable with school. So they might just want to talk at, like on a equal basis, not like a student to student thing where it's very controlled because in the end, teenagers want to be free. So they want the way to do that is through something that is free will, just a group post. So I would start off with that. How about you, Aiden? Any ideas on what you would do if you need to pull together people that maybe had different mindsets? Uh, I would probably take advantage of like club making in school, maybe add a couple more like African American, maybe other races of clubs that you just talk it out. Like no one's gonna understand you more than your own race. So I think having your own like a personal like safe place for you and your other friends that may be the same race as you, just like come together, just make a club and just like, just have fun. Or just like just talk stuff out. but. That's what I would think. Yeah, enjoy your youth. Yeah, enjoy your youth. Um, so I want to ask now, uh, Rita, when you've encountered youth like David and Aiden, the young ones, right? Um, what do you do to reach them? How do you make something like storytelling uh, important? How do you let them see the relevance of that in terms of their Black history? Well, <clears throat> one of the uh, most satisfying things is to come into a situation in a school and see the faces of young people who who don't think that I necessarily have anything to offer because of my of my age and that um, and show them that regardless of the number of seasons of my life I still have experienced some of the same things that they haven't felt the same way so my way of doing that has always been to find that common ground and find that common ground through story Everyone, regardless of your age and regardless of where you are in your economic situation, wants to be accepted, wants to be seen, wants to be valued. And if you present yourself as truthful, as real, and engage with them and let them know that their opinion is valued, their uh, take on the stories that I was telling is appreciated and wanted and needed. That has been how I've uh, approached it going into schools and other places and, and establishing relationships with young people um, because I learn from them as well as I hope that they are open and have learned from me. Kurt, I'd love to hear from you as a young man um, who has, you know, started already to achieve success, already um, pushing ahead in your education. 
what do you see in terms of how you're able to be a, a unifier in your role? Right, so thank you for that question. Um, on the first, I need to understand my position as a researcher, as a scholar, who is still learning from my mentors, still learning from my ancestors. And it is very important for you to understand your target group, understand your, your audience. And I find that the performing arts and the visual arts, entertainment generally, is a medium through which you can get the attention of, of, of individuals. So while I have you here, I'm curious from you, Dr. Denise, how does today's Black activism, and as we can see, even teenagers, you know, they, they make their way to express their feelings about what's going on. But how does Black activism relate to the movements of the civil rights era? When, and, and, and tell us a little bit about your background so people understand why this kind of uh, topic is so relevant for you. Okay, so here's the backstory. Um, I'm from New Jersey. <laughs> My parents are from Virginia. And um, my father was very active in, in the uh, NACP, NA, NAACP. So without, without uh, fail, we were, as, as children, uh, active as well. Having grown up in the 60s uh, and the 70s, going to colleges in the 70s, it was, it was like now. It was very troubling times. Um, there, I do remember John F. Kennedy being assassinated, Robert Kennedy being assassinated, Dr. Martin Luther King. So it was troubling, very, very troubling times. And we were all, um, my friends and I, we were always marching. In fact, I marched so much I got tired of marching. But I do realize having, um, having seen the Ku Klux Klan myself and experiences, it is, it was needed. It was needed. And so now, you know, there are sometimes you, I've heard people say, well, we haven't made progress, but we have not as much as we would like to. And that's why I said earlier, it would be good to start with a problem that we could all talk about. Um, and again, that's why SABA is another reason why it got started, because we need to know our history so we are not forgotten. All right, but what motivates us to contribute to the cause of unification in our community? What do we see today? What do we see in recent years, in the middle of a pandemic, okay? Um, I'd like to hear just very briefly from each of you, what's the motivation? Why is this so important and what in, in you sparks the need for change because it because you need to learn you need to have, acquire wisdom from those who have experienced more than you because truth in the end me and Aiden are just a couple of teenagers and that we need to learn more through those who have been through years on years upon years of experiences and from everywhere from North America to Russia. As long as you have experiences that we have not acquired yet, it is very important that we reunite with people who know more than us. Thank you for that question. Um, to answer that, let me go to my own research. Um, and what I've learned is that the, during slavery, the plantation masters would strategically do things to separate the black race. They would strategically do things to confuse the black people, you know, and we, and I, I, I remember a book that I read, I can't remember the name of it, but I remember this particular verse where it says that we were socialized more towards the mother country, right? Than to ourselves as a people. So we're still struggling in that regard in terms of unification and, and come together and that togetherness and that oneness. I am very much passionate about what I do. And doing this PhD, I always say to myself that doing a PhD on the African contribution to Jamaica is greater than I am. It's something that's bigger than me. And I believe that this journey that I am on 
is to give my ancestors a voice because they have been silenced for so many years. It's to give my ancestors a voice and to allow the people that I write about and that I represent to give them a space on the platform. Well, again, I, I go back to the common ground. If, if we can find that, um, and we find that very often through story because we all as human beings share uh, some of the same experiences. And for me, as a storyteller, that is what I have to do. When I walk in a room and I see who I'm talking to, I have to understand how to reach them where they are and kind of guess at um, what are the possible experiences that they might have had based on you know their age their ethnicity their um you know where they are the time of day all the the, the different things and i do that because once you've once you've found that that is how people come together because they they hear something that they relate to and they go oh if if if, if she's feeling that then perhaps she's not so different from me because that's where the break comes and that's where the fear comes in because they think that you're there and they're here and i've even found that among black people who are suspicious of uh other black people because they're not sure where they come from because they're also not sure about their own history so Finding that bit of common ground is essential in my in my line of work and in my life to having people open up and be real and treat me and uh, others as real human beings and not just the representation of whatever they think that uh, I am. So, you know, when we when we start uh, Sabo, we always start out with an affirmation. We start off with, I am the black child. And we know that our, our kids have experienced ridicule, but we want them to understand that here at Sabo, you are, it's okay. Okay to express yourself because we want them to feel strong. We want them to know that you have, if you have goals, they all have goals that you can be whatever you want to be. You want, we want the best for them. So, you know, sometimes in school, you don't get that. Sometimes people are very quiet for, for whatever reason, they are not called upon, but we give them that opportunity to express themselves, to, uh, to allow them to be who they want to be. And it, it seems to work. It works for us. It works for us. 